Hey guys, in this vlog, I react to the post that a pageant page, Tita Sue Pageantry, has published on their Instagram account on December 18. This is in relation to the statement that I wrote and posted on December 17th on the official Critical Beauty Facebook page in which I clarified any confusion or shortcomings around Critical Beauty's interview with Miss Universe Philippines 2020 Rabia Mateo that took place via Zoom on December 11th. According to their bio, Titas of Pageantry consists of two women, in this case, Titas, which is Filipino for aunties, Tita Belay, who is responsible for the news and updates, and Tita Lavinia, who does all the reviews. I believe the post was written by Tita Lavinia, as suggested by the first line, and it is written in Taglish, a mixture of Tagalog and English. Tita Lavinia starts by writing, I'm posting this one here to be fair. Here is a statement from Critical Beauty, the channel that interviewed Rabia. Well, actually, the name of my YouTube channel is Critical Beauty Salon, and it's not to be confused with Critical Beauty, which refers to the website, Instagram, and Facebook pages. Please read through the statement para naman lahat ng size nakuha natin. Please read through the statement so all sides of the story are heard. Ito lang sa akin, at alam ko, tatanungin niyo po din ako. These are my questions, and I know you will still ask me. Nagpa-approve na pala ng questions sa handler. Naitanong na lahat, bakit pa nag-improvise? Bakit pinahaba pa interview? Translation the handler approved the questions and they were all asked, but why improvise? Why was the interview extended? As far as I know, in a live interview, there aren't any rules. If the person I'm going to interview requests a list of questions, then I provide them with a list and I give them the option to answer all or some of the questions. If they choose not to respond to any questions on the list, it doesn't mean that I cannot ask alternative questions. There is nothing more boring than an interview that is scripted. Sometimes being spontaneous can make the interview more appealing, especially if there's an element of surprise. Initially, Rabia felt uneasy. Um, hindi na pala komportable yung tao eh. E bakit pinush pa din? Translation, Rabia felt uneasy. Um, the girl did not feel comfortable, so why was she pushed to answer anyway? It is not the duty, nor has it ever been the duty of the interviewer to make the interviewee comfortable. I treat everyone the same. So if Rabia had felt uncomfortable about some of the questions I asked, then she could have gracefully declined to answer and I would have respected it, but she didn't and she made a great effort in answering them. As I had mentioned to her, the interview could be considered as part of her training and that my questions could potentially be asked at Miss Universe. Given that the Indonesian PL used parts of the interview to bully Rabia, why was the intent to see her reaction to a hypothetical situation? So, what exactly is wrong with asking hypothetical questions? Such questions are also frequently asked in any pageant competition. Hypothetical questions provide a means for understanding what we would do if the world were different. I mean, they also allow interviewers to see how the interviewee thinks including how she structures problems, assumptions she makes, and how curious she is about exploring the problem. Mm, parang wala apology or accountability. As if there was no apology or accountability. The Critical Beauty team did not do anything wrong, so there was no need for apology or accountability. Since when is asking a question considered wrong? We feel that we gave Rabia the same respect that we gave to previous interviewees. See, here's where we forget our places as analysts and vloggers. When these girls grace our channels, it is not up to us to test their skills. We are not trainers and experts. We aren't even journalists. 
When these girls grace our channels and platforms, it is to help them bring out their personalities, test out their training in communication and PR. They're not supposed to be guests at our shows to pass or fail a pageant exam. Tita Lavinia, you should really speak for yourself. You may not be a trainer or expert, but I am. I have been in the pageant industry for over 20 years as a pageant critic, a pageant coach, and a pageant mentor, and as a pageant vlogger only for a year and a half. I'd be happy to send you my resume as evidence of my claim. I'm not a journalist, nor have I ever claimed to be one. But before I post anything on my website or social media, I make sure that everything is verifiable and authentic, unlike some bloggers or vloggers who post anything for the sake of getting more followers. Did our interview with Rabia not bring out her personality? Did our interview not test out her training in communication and public relations? If you think that we conducted our interview with Rabia as some type of a pageant exam, I'm sorry to say that you are wrong. If you watch the entire interview, you will realize that we asked her several trivial questions that are asked to every beauty queen. Questions like, do you like flowers? Can you give us a hint about your national costume? Do you have guilty pleasures? Do you like to eat a lot? Do you cook? What kinds of food would you not eat? So forth and so on. These questions were not on the original list that we had sent to Rabia's handler, but she aced all of them anyway. And even if we ask exam type, exam type questions, so what? Yun kasi dating sa akin nito, walang accountability na napahamak nila yung bata. Eager yung isa to please and to be game, hindi niya agad nag-gets na sa pagiging mapagbigyan niya. Nasisilipan siya. Mas masaklap pa is dumaan sa handler niya. Translation, from what I understand from this statement, there's no accountability in their part that the girl has been harmed by them. The girl is eager to please them and to be game with a question. She was not able to get it right away because she's generous and that others may see her weaknesses. What's worse is that they made it through the handler and not through the proper channel. So, Tita Lavinia, you seem to imply that we had purposely planned to hurt Rabia's image. I don't know where that idea came from, but you are clearly overreacting. There was no way for us to know how Rabia would respond to a question, much less react to it. I mean, isn't the whole purpose of the interview is to get acquainted with Rabia and to get to know her better? And that includes anticipating her reaction. So why should we be accountable for something that we did not expect? Palagay ko, lahat ng parties may oversight. It's up to us now to clean this mess up, leave the Indonesians to their bullying ways, at ganun talaga mga yan. I think that all parties failed. It's up to us now to clean this mess up, leave the Indonesians to their bullying ways because they're like that. Well, Critical Beauty did not fail. We delivered exactly what we had intended to do, to give Rabia airtime to be herself and to express her opinion on certain topics. Rabia, Miss Universe Philippines organization, and her trainers should be grateful to the media like Critical Beauty for promoting their pageant and for providing further exposure to their title holder. How the public reacted or took the interview was beyond our control. Now, I think you should apologize to the Indonesians for implying that they're all bullies. The only statement in this whole post by Tida Lavinia that I happen to agree with is the last one, which goes, As for Rabia, it's best that she keep a low profile for now. She shouldn't be temperamental when she's a guest on TV. I think it's part of her training. What they have to focus now is regroup. Think of appearances and activities for Abia to elevate her brand. Bring in the class factor, the elegance factor, and the slight unavailability factor. 
I will also add that the Miss Universe Philippines organization should be the one making official statements about her events to give it more credibility. Since the Miss Universe Philippines organization is just a little over a year old, it is still raw and it needs plenty of room for improvement as far as managing its title holders and dealing with the media. It should also be open to constructive criticisms and most importantly to consistent transparency. No mysteries, no dramas, and definitely no scandals that could ultimately bring down the entire organization. And finally, to vloggers out there who may have any issue with each other, could we please make an effort to contact each other directly in private instead of airing out our grievances in public to avoid unnecessary drama? After all, we all share the same passion for pageantry and without us united in our purpose to promote pageantry, the industry could crumble like a house of cards. So please, let's support each other. And that will be all. Thank you for watching, guys. Until the next time, bye.